Reverse gear can be a little bit challenging sometimes and doesn't always want to go in first time. So I'm going to explain what you can do if it doesn't want to go in, how you can avoid those nasty crunching sounds to prolong the life of your gearbox and why reverse gear can be so difficult. I'll get straight to the point. In this car, to select reverse, it's clutch down. You can't just go left and forwards because that's first. You've got to go left, down, which allows you to go even further left and then forwards to select reverse. But what if it won't go in? Well, go to neutral, clutch up, clutch down, and try the same thing again, and it should go in. If it doesn't the second time, again, just do the same thing again, neutral, clutch up, clutch down, and try again, and it should almost certainly go in on the third attempt. You're probably thinking why it doesn't go into reverse gear first time every time. So I've got these two bits of card to demonstrate. These represent your gears. I know they're technically cogs, but it works for this demonstration. Sometimes when you go to select reverse, this can happen. The gears contact each other instead of meshing with each other. When they contact each other, it can feel like your gear stick won't quite go all the way into reverse. When you go to neutral and bring the clutch up, one of the gears spins. So the next time you push the clutch down to select reverse, the probability is they will actually mesh together because the probability of them contacting each other is actually quite low. This doesn't look anything like a gear in your gearbox. You have many, many small teeth that are designed in a way that they're more likely to mesh first time. Whether it meshes first time or the probability of it meshing first time does come down to the design of your gearbox. This gearbox is quite good. I would say I only have to have a second attempt at reverse about one in 20 times, about 5% of the time. But there have been some cars I've driven where it's like 50-50 as to whether it will go into reverse first time. And it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with your gearbox. It's just the design of your gearbox. If you've ever heard a horrible crunching sound when you selected reverse, it kind of sounds something like this. <coughs> That's really bad. That's causing harm to your gearbox. The reason why it's happening is because your gears are spinning when you select reverse. And as a result, they grind against each other and little bits of metal can get chipped off. That metal gets into your gear oil, goes around your gearbox and causes more harm. Yes, the metal chippings do generally sink to the bottom, but cars are mobile. They go up and down, side to side, so the oil gets sloshed about quite a lot. How to stop it? Well, when you press the clutch down, don't select reverse immediately. When you press the clutch down, the gear on the input shaft of the gearbox doesn't stop instantly. There is inertia and it is still spinning and it stops slowly. Give it a couple of seconds and it will stop. Then you can engage reverse without them spinning and no harm is done. But also don't be moving when you select reverse because if you're moving, the gear on the output shaft of the gearbox is doing whatever the wheels of the car are doing. Whatever the wheels of the car are doing, the gear on the output shaft is doing too. So make sure you come to a full stop, clutch down, wait a couple of seconds, then your gears shouldn't be spinning, and then you can select reverse without that horrible sound. What I tend to do when I select reverse is come to a full stop, and then I select reverse slowly, because that ensures the gears have had enough time to stop. To get more technical, one of the reasons why it's more challenging to engage reverse than the other gears is because you're trying to add an extra gear into the mix. You're trying to connect two gears together, whereas all the other gears are permanently connected to each other. It's just most of the time they spin loosely on the shaft. And if you engage that gear, it will now be fixed to that shaft. The reason why you have to add another gear into the mix is to make the car go back. The engine can only spin one way. The engine cannot spin backwards. But as you can see here, when one gear spins one way, it forces the other gear to spin the other way. And that's why adding an extra gear before the output shaft will reverse the output shaft of your gearbox. And you go backwards. Some cars have a synchronizer on reverse, which allows you to select reverse when you're rolling forwards or the moment you press the clutch down without having to wait. And what a synchronizer does is it lines up the gears so they mesh together perfectly even when they're spinning. The problem I have is that the cars I've owned with a synchronizer on reverse have been older cars, my 2001 Vauxhall VX220 and my 2003 Seat Ibiza, which incidentally was the first car I taught people to drive in. And when I ordered my 
brand new 2010 Ibiza to replace the 2003 model. I was very surprised when I selected reverse to a nasty crunch. So I was thinking, well, aren't we going a little bit backwards here to not have that feature now? And this 2014 Leon, which is a lot more money, doesn't have it either. Well, I hope this video helps you select reverse. If you think it does, please give it a thumbs up and check out Collingwood and Confused in the description. If you're learning to drive, Collingwood can help you because you can insure yourself on somebody else's car without affecting their policy, without risking their no claims bonus, which takes away some of the stress from your supervisor when they're supervising your driving. Via the link right now, there's up to 35% off and the £20 Amazon gift card. And using that link does support this channel, but it doesn't cost you anything. So thank you very much. If you're insuring your own car, I recommend you check out confused.com because with Confused, you can fill out one quote form and get loads of quotes back to find out who's cheapest. And you can change the car as many times as you like to find out how much it costs to insure each car. And again, using that link does support this channel. So thank you. If you wanna get my future videos, please subscribe. I also have Facebook and Instagram now, both for Conquer Driving. And until the next one, cheerio.